Russia is shocked. Saki Air Base in Crimea went up in flames as tourists and locals witnessed the inferno. Did Ukraine just wipe out the entire air base without suffering any casualties of their own? In this unprecedented scene, a turn of events unfold that may well be a turning point in the Russia-Ukraine war. Keep on watching to find out what could have transpired in Crimea last week. Satellite photographs from the seized Crimean airfield Saki are conclusive. After a sequence of powerful explosions on Tuesday afternoon, nine Russian fighter planes were thought to have been destroyed, but the exact count might be higher, with several left as nothing more than scorched streaks on the ground. In an article by The Guardian, it's claimed that it equates to almost one-fifth of all known Russian combat aircraft losses in the Ukraine conflict. Now 47, according to Ornix analyst. And although Moscow's Air Force has dozens more fighters in its inventory, the enormity of the victory and its immediate propaganda worth cannot be overstated. Although not the first Ukrainian strike in Crimea since the conflict began, it is the most important, not only because it occurred 110 miles behind the front line, but also because it occurred in front of thousands of visitors. Sunbathing Russians were seen frantically abandoning their sun loungers, with clouds from the explosion in the background and subsequently jamming the highways off the peninsula with vehicles. Ukrainian propagandists lost no time in hammering home their point. The country's defense ministry created a film targeted at average Russian tourists. It advised that you had a few options for a summer vacation, but cautioned that you chose Crimea, big mistake, accompanied with images of the explosion as viewed from the beach. The Russian population may have a different picture of the Ukrainian conflict, but news of failures does sometimes make its way through. The destruction of airplanes at Saki will rank among tragedies such as the sinking of the cruiser Moskva in April, or the estimated loss of more than 70 armored vehicles in the March unsuccessful river crossing at Bilo Horvika in Donbas. The effect will be amplified by word of mouth from those fleeing. However, casualties are an unavoidable part of battle. Therefore, another consideration is what military and political consequence will the strike have? Ukraine has been especially hesitant to openly accept blame in public despite authorities doing so privately. That seems Kiev wants to keep some mystery about how the strike occurred, not least because it hopes to duplicate its success. Certainly, the attackers knew what they were aiming for, likely hitting more than one ammunition or fuel dump, which was placed dangerously close to the aircraft, resulting in the intense explosions and fire seen not only in satellite imagery, but also in a video of a string of burnt out cars parked nearby. Such accuracy is only possible with good local information, which is a source of concern for the Russians. The dumps were most likely targeted from close range, maybe with a kamikaze drone, in a daring assault by special troops or partisans. Long range missiles have not been ruled out since the airbase is potentially within range of Neptune missiles launched from Odessa. 165 miles distance, but researchers reviewing explosion films have found no evidence to corroborate this. Another potential weapon that could have been used is the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS. It is not publicly known whether Ukraine has acquired such a system yet. According to Dan Rice, a U.S. combat veteran and special advisor to Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine's Armed Forces, he noted that ATA CMS are fired from the standard HIMARS M142 platform, or the M270 MLRS platform, and have a range of 300 kilometers. It would be agreed between NATO and Ukraine that no ATA CMS could be fired outside of Ukraine territory. Maintaining an army that does not control the skies and will be under fire at any location that they can occupy in Ukraine will likely prove to be an impossible task for the Russian army, he stated. According to Justin Bronk, a defense and security expert at the Royal United States Institute, 
the fundamental military importance of the operation was not the quantity of aircraft lost, but rather the influence it would have on the Russian Air Force's perception of security. He predicted that the Air Force would have less confidence in their force protection capabilities within several hundred kilometers of the front lines. This might imply that Russian forces would have to dedicate more troops, equipment, and effort to protecting their air bases, pulling forces away from the front line, or depend on air bases that are significantly further away, reducing efficiency and effectiveness. However, Ukraine's short-term ambition is far larger. To launch a massive counter-offensive before the fall to push Russian soldiers out of Kyrgyzstan, the only city west of the Dnieper River that the invaders control. Ukraine's troops are conducting a series of strikes on military sites and ammunition depots, apparently to disrupt Russian logistics and weaken Moscow's capacity to defend and reinforce Kyrgyzstan. Attacks have largely targeted the city and the surrounding Kyrgyzstan region, including a depot, a road, and rail connections to Crimea. However, the Russians claimed a drone hit on the Sevastopol naval base in southern Crimea at the end of July. The issue is whether such assaults will substantively erode Russia's capacity to withstand a full-fledged response or whether they will just amount to social media propaganda coups. That will only be put to the test if Ukraine gathers enough fighting might to move on the city. Meanwhile, there is apparent anxiety that Russia would seek retaliation after being stung by the strike on what is considered its backyard. Do you think the loss of aircraft and equipment will provoke a Russian response? Let us know in the comments below.